Worst to best is a series where I rank all weapons within a class after I've unlocked forged camo and have a considerable amount of experience with each weapon. This video is all about shotguns, including the ones from Modern Warfare 2. Please don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel, and as always, you're welcome to leave your own worst to best list in the comments if you happen to disagree with me. Now shotguns feel a bit underpowered in this game. So the most important shotgun stat to me is the damage output and the consistency of that damage. Handling, mobility, and all that other stuff comes second. And I say that because it is impressive how some of the Modern Warfare 2 shotguns fail to offer anything that I just mentioned. So starting us off at the number 9 spot, the worst shotgun in this game is the Lockwood 300 from Modern Warfare 2. This shotgun is straight cheeks. Being limited to two shots that doesn't even guarantee you a kill is infinitely worse. The dual trigger slug rounds doesn't even improve the Lockwood 300's performance. In fact, I think it actually makes the weapon worse, and that was a setup that was sniping people from across the map in Modern Warfare 2 and in Warzone just a few months ago. This weapon is shockingly bad, and that's all I have to say about it. Moving on to the number 8 spot, we have the Bryson 890. This shotgun isn't much better. It's a hit marker machine. I get more one shot kills with semi-auto shotguns than I do with this pump action shotgun. Moving on to the number 7 spot is the Bryson 800, which is literally the same as the Bryson 890, except this one reloads shell by shell instead of a magazine, and the Bryson 800 has slightly better range in damage, and I want to emphasize slightly, this is still a hit marker machine, the fire rate's even slower, and even with a uh, faster fire rate attachment, this thing still fires incredibly slow. I'm not sure if they forgot to buff the damage for these shotguns or what, but this is yet a another pure garbage weapon. At the number 6 spot, we have the Expedite 12. And once again, as you can see, the Expedite 12 isn't much better than the pump actions. This does have similar damage, which actually is good because this is a semi-auto weapon rather than being a pump action, and it has double the fire rate of the Brysons, so when you don't hit that one-shot kill, you still have some chance of getting the follow-up shot off before you get killed. And honestly, I think this does give me more consistent one-shots than the pump actions do. It's crazy how bad those weapons are. But don't get it twisted, this Expedite 12, it's a horrible weapon, it's not worth checking out. The number 5 spot is where we finally get into the usable shot. Gun. So at the number 5 spot we have Modern Warfare 3's Riveter. This is a full auto spray and pray shotgun that is incapable of getting a one shot kill. It can take anywhere from 2 to 5 shots to kill depending on your range. Uh, the issue I have with this shotgun is that it just tends to be inconsistent. And I believe that's because the Riveter will fire just 4 pellets at a time. For comparison, all the Modern Warfare 2 shotguns will fire 8 pellets at a time, and the way shotguns work in this game is the damage is spread across the number of pellets fired. So when you fire less pellets, that means you're going to be dealing higher damage per pellet, and that also means if you miss a pellet, you're going to be missing a large chunk of damage. So in the Riveter's case, I think this is the reason why it tends to be inconsistent outside of point-blank ranges. The, the Modern Warfare 2 shotguns just deal crap damage, I guess. I don't know what the problem is with those. Uh, but the shotgun coming up at the number one spot is a good counter example for pellet count, if that's not making sense for you yet. Uh, but as for the Riveter, I just don't really know what to expect when I pull the trigger. Uh, it does have a 30 round mag option, which is nice, and you can literally just spray and pray for seconds at a time. Uh, but this is an okay shotgun. I do think it's below average and there are better options out there. Next up at the number 4 spot is the MX Guardian, which is surprisingly decent. The key to this weapon is that you do not want to use it in full auto. In full auto, I actually think the MX Guardian performs worse than the Riveter, but when you have this in semi-auto, the MX Guardian puts in work. 
It cannot one-shot kill, but it's a pretty reliable two to three-shot kill, and it has a fast fire rate, so you can be racking up those kills very quickly. What holds this weapon back is the max range where you're dealing tickle damage or your bullets just don't even register is pretty short. It also has one of the slowest aim down sights and sprint to fire speeds. And specifically for the aim down sight stat, there aren't many attachments that are going to be helping you speed that up. So you have to resort to hip fire and the MX Guardian has the worst hip fire stats in the entire shotgun class. This in my eyes is a textbook average shotgun that you can do well with when you know how to use it. The third best shotgun in Modern Warfare 3 is the KV Broadside. The KV Broadside is another semi-auto shotgun that is similar to the MX Guardian if you remove the downsides that weapon has and up the damage a bit. The KV Broadside cannot one-shot, but it does have a much better range. This gets you consistent two to three shot kills. Uh, it can take more than three shots, but mostly you're getting two to three shot kills with this. And I prefer to hip fire the KV broadside with my build. But uh, one thing that this weapon does have going for is that it boasts the fastest aim down sight speed in the entire class. This also has one of the best sprint to fire times. So you can get this to be an aim down sight shotgun so you can up your chances of landing more pellets and getting more consistent than two shot kills. I just can't help myself uh, with equipping that large 25 round mag and just spraying down multiple enemies in multiple gunfights with hip fire. Uh, but the KV broadside feels really good. Unfortunately, the shotgun at the number two spot, in my opinion, renders the broadside and every shotgun we've reviewed so far irrelevant. It's that good. Moving on to the runner-up second best shotgun in Modern Warfare 3, that weapon is the Haymaker. This is a good semi-auto shotgun. It actually reminds me of the Brecky from Black Ops 3 if y'all play that game back in the heyday. Very impressive shotgun. The Haymaker deals great damage and it has great range and it is able to one-shot kill in close quarters. I found myself surprised how often I land myself a one-shot kill with this. Yeah, it happens way more than you'd think. I also love how consistent this shotgun is. It rarely takes more than three shots to kill, plus it has great attachment options. I think attachments is the one benefit that Modern Warfare 3 shotguns have over Modern Warfare 2 ones. Uh, I'm not sure if better attachments would help those Modern Warfare 2 pump actions, uh, but in this game, suppressors no longer will increase your range. The range boosts are all in the barrel attachments, and Modern Warfare 2 shotguns were never balanced for that. So the Modern Warfare 3 shotguns, like the Haymaker, tend to have better range, better handling, better mobility, etc. And this allows you to close distances on enemies better to secure that two-shot kill. Uh, but overall, the Haymaker is a great performing shotgun, and it's my choice of shotgun when I'm feeling that spray and pray playstyle. But obviously, it's not the best because we still have that number one shotgun to go over. So a quick reminder, if you haven't dropped a like on this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I got more worst to best in the works for Modern Warfare 3, and you don't want to miss them. Uh, but that brings us to the best shotgun in Modern Warfare 3. I think hands down is the Lockwood 680. This is Modern Warfare 3's one and only pump action shotgun, and boy, is it good. Now, I don't think there's an overpowered 5 out of 5 star shotgun in this game, at least as of yet, uh, which is a good thing because oppressive shotguns like that tend to be annoying, but the Lockwood is very, very good. This is the shotgun for stretching out your range and getting consistent one-shot kills, and that is backed by the Lockwood having the longest range stat. The Lockwood also has access to a barrel that ups the pellet count from 6 to 10, which again is going to be increasing your damage. And on top of that, it has the Titus ADS pellet spread. So with the right class setup, the Lockwood just dishes out tons of damage and gets you a lot of one-shot kills. 
Now, class setup is important for this weapon, so I'm going to quickly flash what I rock uh, for the Lockwood 680 for you to try out. Uh, this weapon at first may feel awkward without attachments, but this will be most effective when you're ducking in and out of cover while ADSing to tighten the pellet spread for maximum damage. It's also very effective at hip firing, as you've seen in the gameplay. This shotgun feels like how a shotgun should in my opinion. It was the first shotgun I used in Modern Warfare 3. Uh, the, the Riveter was the second one, so you can imagine the whiplash I felt from that experience. But the Lockwood 680 is easily the best. I think it's pretty well balanced uh, for the state of Modern Warfare 3. That's just my opinion though, as always, you're welcome to leave your own worst two best lists. Maybe you disagree with me on some shotguns, if so, leave a comment. Again, please don't forget to tap that like button, get subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. My name's D, thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all on the next video.